This episode of Marijuana Today Daily is brought to you by Natural Order Supply, one of the nation's premier cannabis cultivation supply companies located right in Grand Junction, Colorado. If you are an industrial hemp farmer and need a good supplier of cultivation supplies, whether it's lights or harvest equipment, or if you just need some advice on how to get better yields, then you need to check out Natural Order Supply over at their website at naturalordersupply.com. Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Wednesday, May 27th, 2020, and you're tuned in to episode 943 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Gunther, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. We start the day's news off in Boston, Massachusetts, where on Monday, the state's adult use dispensaries were allowed to open their doors after being shut down in March as the coronavirus swept the nation. While medical shops were deemed essential businesses by Governor Charlie Baker, adult use shops were not. So there was a lot of pent up demand that manifested in some very long lines outside adult use shops, such as Dorchester's Pure Oasis, the only adult use dispensary currently located within the actual city limits of Boston. Regulators are requiring dispensaries to limit their sales to curbside pickup only and will only allow in-store business during the second phase of the reopening opening, which is yet to come. That restriction makes a lot of sense, but is reducing the amount of customers that shops can serve, with one store manager telling the Boston Herald that they would only be able to serve around 20% of the number of customers that they could reach in pre-pandemic times. A good storyline to generally follow. A new report out of New Zealand estimates that the nation could bring in just under $500 million a year in tax revenue from the sale of legal adult use cannabis. New Zealand has been advancing its legal marijuana policies in a more progressive direction over the last few years, with citizens set to go to the polls in September to cast votes on a non-binding referendum on whether the country should make adult use legal. The new report was developed by the New Zealand Institute of Economic Research and used data from Colorado and Canada to bake its model, showing $490 million in annual cannabis tax revenue. Chris Moore over Mary Jane has more on this if you need it. As always, we have all the news we cover linked to on our website at mjtodaydaily.com. We wind down our final top story in Canada, where licensed marijuana giant Tilray just announced that it is closing down its wholly owned subsidiary, High Park Gardens, which Tilray bought just last year in a deal worth $25 million. As part of the shutdown, which Tilray says will save $7.5 million in operating costs per year, the company is also closing up an indoor grow and processing facility with more than 400,000 square feet of licensed space. This is certainly part of the overall trend in Canada away from expensive indoor space towards cheaper outdoor grows and a part of the overall industry contracting to meet demand. Those are our top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. Before we blitz out in headlines, let's quickly thank our sponsor, Natural Order Supply, one of the nation's premier cannabis cultivation supply companies located right in Grand Junction, Colorado. If you are an industrial hemp farmer looking for both grow supplies and advice on how to get the best yields, then Natural Order Supply should be your next visit online, where you can find them at naturalordersupply.com. They've worked with hundreds of hemp farms since starting up in 2015, so they have the practical real-world experience that will save you money and boost your bottom line. And if you need help calculating your per-cost plant to put down industrial hemp, then you have come to the right place because they're pros at that too at Natural Order Supply. Pop over to their website to learn about all the ways that Natural Order Supply can make your life as an industrial hemp farmer easier and more profitable. One more time, that's naturalordersupply.com. All right, time for the Blitz. Kyle Yeager over Marijuana Moment details efforts in Oregon to put a question before voters in the fall to decriminalize the possession of all drugs, as well as another to legalize psilocybin mushrooms for medical purposes. As Kyle has it, it looks pretty likely that both measures will succeed as the two campaigns have turned in a healthy amount of extra signatures over the required number of 112,020 verified. 
pop over to Kyle's story on marijuana moments for all the other details on this one. Canadian marijuana giant Afria just announced that it is leaving the New York Stock Exchange and is moving over to the NASDAQ, effective June 5th. The company's new NASDAQ listing will be filed under the ticker symbol APHA, the same symbol the company uses in its stock on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Green Market Report has more here if this affects your world. Illinois-based multi-state cannabis operator Cresco Labs is buying up four medical marijuana dispensaries located in Ohio, which will max it out on the number of licenses allowed by one company in that state. Cresco will purchase the four Ohio shops from the company Verdant Creations for a total of $1.5 million in cash and $2 million in stock. The Nevada Independent has a juicy story up detailing allegations made by a former executive at marijuana multi-state operator MedMen that he was pressured by MedMen founders Adam Bierman and Andrew Maudlin to donate money to now Governor Steve Sisolak of Nevada. That is illegal, which would be a problem for Bierman and Maudlin if proven true. MedMen is currently in a bit of a swirl down the drain, with the company most recently closing down five of its Florida shops without much explanation. So this is not a bad one to read in full. Marijuana Business Daily's chart of the week shows the steady progress made in North Dakota in terms of its registered medical marijuana account, which stands at just under 3,000. That's not a huge amount of people, but North Dakota does only have 760,000 or so residents, so that number puts them at about half the frequency of medical patients as Maryland. As with all of Marijuana Business Daily's charts of the week, this one has good accompanying background, so think about adding this one to your list to read. Wrapping up our day is Vice Media, with a look at the growth of sponsorship by marijuana companies of professional athletes. Ignoring the coronavirus for just a touch, Vice dives into both the worlds of cannabis sponsorship, as well as the actual use of marijuana by professional athletes. One particular interesting use of marijuana is by long-distance runners, who says it helps them get into a good zone for running for hours and hours at a stretch. Another story I'd peruse in full today. Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with you again tomorrow morning with another information-packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. But in the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interweb, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com to find links to all the news we cover. Thanks to our sponsor, Natural Order Supply, and to all of our awesome patron listeners for the support that makes this show possible. To join the illustrious ranks of the patron listeners yourself, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says, Become a Patron. I'm your host, Jay Gunther. Thanks for tuning in and starting your day with marijuana today. Today. One take, Shay. One take.